Weaving a story grew by my love of weaving sashes. And the sash weaving that I do is on an ankle loom. And I was taught by Mary Conway of Turtle Mountain last year. And I fell in love with it because it tells a story personally of the person's story of their family, their community, or their business. The patterns on the sashes are all created and they're unique and they tell a story within the sash. I would love to see Inca Loom sashes on all the Métis people. I think that Inca Loom sash weaving is an art from our past that needs to be brought up. We've done finger weaving. There are many different sashes that are out there that are pre-made, but to be able to create a sash and tell the story of a person, a family, or a school or a corporation to me. I hope to accomplish that something that I've learned from someone very special to learn how to ink a loom a, a sash is so important to our history. It's so important to our culture and to be able to weave a story and tell the story of the person who owns that sash, whether it be about their family, their business, or even about the school. To me, it's so important to get that story out there and to have more people to tell their story through wearing a simple sash. It's a relaxing journey, just like beading, to sit down and to create someone's story. For example, this is the University of Winnipeg sash. So to sit down and to tell the University of Winnipeg story through their colors, the colors are white and red, Red is very, very prominent in sashes. So I wanted to do something a little bit different and do white. I wanted to modernize the sash so that um, you'd see something unique. So when someone sees a unique sash made like the University of Winnipeg sash, they would see it and go, what sash is that? What does it mean? So that it could tell a story of what it's all about. Working at Louis Riel Institute, I'm so excited to create workshops so that people can learn how to weave, learn how to tell a story, figure out how to um, string up the, the loom and start weaving. To me, when you start to actually weave the sash, you actually can see the pattern come alive. And to me, that is so precious to see. And to pass that on and for others to create their sashes is pretty amazing. What's exciting is they would get to learn the history of a sash. A sash wasn't just something that a voyageur wore. People wore them as, it, to me, a sash represents almost like a Batman utility belt <laughs> of the future. They used it for many different things and they weren't just um, a garment, a belt that they would wear. They would use it as a tool belt. So they would put their pemmican inside. They would use the actual sash for helping for portaging to, um, they would have the strings on it for sewing. They would use the sash for washing. There were so many different things that they would use for the sash. So for people to learn that, that it wasn't just all about voyageurs, but other people made them and it represented their life, who they were. And people knew who they were because of what their sash looked like. And to learn that, I think it's very important. Even the colors of the sash mean something. Um, for example, red represents the blood that was shed through our Métis nation, as well as the heart of the Métis nation. Green represents fertility, our lifeline. Uh, black represents the dark times. We don't want to forget about the dark times. Those dark times represent Louis Riel being hanged for high treason road allowance people, as well as residential schools. We don't want to forget that. So we want to make sure those patterns are weaved into the sash. White mm -hmm. represents the creator. We want to give back to the creator. So we want to make sure that that's in the sash. Blue represents the sky, the water, as well as when it's weaved in as the Métis flag. It's so important to have those in there. And the other color is yellow. Because of the dark times in our history, uh, the, Ma the Manitoba Métis Federation introduced yellow. And yellow represents a bright and a bright future, hope for the future. So to be able to put that in a sash 
to me represents so much more than just a pattern. I hope to pass on the knowledge through workshops, through Louis Riel Institute, by wearing the sashes and getting the interest out there so people can learn how to make them, um, be excited to wear them because it represents them. I think some of the challenges would be for the Inco looms themselves. They're a very unique uh, loom. And so to have someone build them in the proper way, because we don't want to lose the way that the loom was made. There's so many different looms out there that we want to stick to the Inco loom that I was taught on. So to make sure that those looms are available to people, make sure that there's teachers out there that are willing to teach this art, and sitting down with people and allowing them to think outside the box, making it more modern, making a sash for their own, I think is really, really important. Ankle looming is done on an ankle loom and it's pattern based instead of the chevron and lightning pattern. So each pattern represents something about the family or a memory of the Métis Nation. So the black and red on my sash represents the dark times, the heart of the Métis Nation, the blood that was shed. This pattern represents the Red River Settlement. My family came from the Red River Settlement. The green, there's a green line that goes through and that represents my lifeline. And then I have three footsteps. Um, on the outer side, and that represents my three boys. Then we have the Métis flag, and in the middle I have a wildflower pattern. And the reason why I created that is I also wanted to represent my Hungarian heritage side, and my grandmother taught me how to embroider, so I wanted to incorporate that in there. This is a more modern sash. It is in teal, and I did that because teal represents a fresh and new beginnings. And everything that I've gone through in my life, I wanted to have that represented in my sash. We braid the ends of the sash and the reason for that it's it's two cultures coming together to make Métis and it's tightly woven so it's braided. So it's another way of saying that the Métis are tightly woven and the beads of course represent the beads of our past and our beading. Indigenous education is has come a long way and it's so exciting to have Indigenous education. When I say about the bright future, it's so exciting to be able to share the art of sash weaving, beading, talking about Métis history and using our stories and being able to have a voice to me is exciting for Indigenous education. Um, and to be a part of this and to share this um, and for people to wear these sashes to me is so important because it represents who we are as Métis people. It's not a question of what's going to happen with Indigenous education, that Indigenous education, whether it be language, culture, history, will be out there and that our children's children will understand who the Métis are as a nation and that they would learn about our culture through either beading, sashing, visiting the sites all around Winnipeg, um, so that they can be proud of who they are as a Métis. There's no question about in Indigenous education anymore because it's already in our school systems.